Have you heard the story of the boy digging in a manure pile? As he throws the manure off the side, his father walks over to him and says, Son, why are you digging in a pile of cow poop? The little boy says, Well, Dad, I figure there has to be a pony in here somewhere. Well, that's how I look at this mound behind me. It's a mountain of nasturtiums. And I know that buried in there is a metal sculpture of a sea otter, a marigold, a prize rhododendron, and a blue frog. Now, how these things got buried is my fault. I did something I shouldn't have. So today, we're diving into the ups and downs of growing nasturtiums. And between you and me, one of the downsides totally caught me off guard. Now be sure to stick around to the end because I'll be sharing unusual ways to use nasturtiums. So let's get into the video. First, I think it's helpful to get to know who or what we're growing in our garden. It's like getting to know a new friend, don't you think? Now, where did nasturtiums come from in the first place? Well, they originated deep in the tropical forests of the Andes Mountains of South America in countries like Peru and Ecuador. In fact, the ancient Incas of Peru valued them both as a salad vegetable and a medicinal herb. In the 1400s, European explorers and botanists began traveling to new continents and well that's out of curiosity and in search of you know new resources but by the 1500s nasturtium seeds had made their way to Europe and later North America. In fact Thomas Jefferson even grew them in his vegetable garden at Monticello in the late 1770s. Today you can find nasturtiums growing most anywhere around the world, well, maybe not Antarctica. There are many reasons to grow nasturtiums in your garden. Their flowers, leaves, and leaves are edible, adding a peppery flavor, sort of like watercress, to salads and sandwiches, appetizers, and wraps. Speaking of peppery flavors, do you know what the name nasturtium means? It comes from the Latin words for nays or nose and tortum as in twist, as in twisted nose? I think it's because of its tangy flavor, you think? Nasturtiums are easy to grow in raised beds and containers, even in poor soils. Now keep that in mind because we're going to talk about that shortly. Their brilliant trumpet-like flowers brighten up your garden, plus they attract pollinators like bumblebees and butterflies. By the way, the next time you see a bumblebee land on a nasturtium flower, watch how it collects nectar. You'll see how she goes around to the back, to the spur. She does that to chew a hole and then poke her tongue inside and then rob the nectar, which is kind of cool, huh? Now we come to what caught me off guard, and it's something you need to be aware of when growing nasturtiums. You see, Nasturtiums can be, well, aggressive. That's right. They wind around most anything, which is, it's not a bad thing. It's just their nature. But they can smother plants. So here's my challenge. The nasturtiums are taking over. The leaves have grown to the size of dinner plates, and the vines are as thick as my fingers. They're, they're choking out everything. When you grow nasturtiums in the right soil, even poor soil, the flowers usually sit above the leaves. But in this raised bed, the vines and leaves are growing so thick, they've they formed a jungle. And in order to even see the flowers, you have to kind of dig through the twisted mass of green. And to make things worse, Mold and stuff has started to form on the leaves down below, and slugs are enjoying a feast. They're having a heyday. So what caused the nasturtiums to grow into a green Godzilla in the first place? Well, it was my mistake. Here's what happened. Before transplanting the nasturtium seedlings, 
I added lots and lots of compost and some chicken manure to the soil. Now compost and manure is loaded with nitrogen and too much nitrogen means a super lush set of green leaves but fewer flowers or fruits. It's like they're putting all their energy into the leaves instead of the flowers. Too much nitrogen in the soil also causes plants like peas and beans and primroses to explode with greenery at the expense of flowers. So keep that in mind. So what am I going to do? Well, because we have at least six weeks left of our growing season here in Kodiak, Alaska, I need to pull the plants before they cause some serious damage. But before I do that, I'm going to give the plants 24 hours notice by telling them, Hi, my name is Marion. I admire your beautiful flowers and leaves and I, and I bow to the spirit in you. But hey, I made a mistake and I need to remove your vines from this bed. And I humbly apologize. Now, as promised earlier, here are some fun ways to use nasturtiums. Arrange them in bouquets and press them to use on cards and prints. Add nasturtium flowers to salads and side dishes. Use them as tiny wraps or as like crackers with a little dollop of filling. Dress up avocado toast and focaccia bread. Now here's a dessert idea for you. Pre-chill some nasturtium flowers in a container lined with a moist paper towel. After an hour or so, remove them from the fridge and then fill them with a dollop of ice cream or frozen yogurt. It's the best ice cream cone ever and kids love them. I personally like to pickle the green seed pods. No, not, not the dried seeds you plant, but this is like an inexpensive alternative to capers. They're super easy to make. I'll share my recipe in the description below. So we just learned the beauty and the beast of growing and enjoying nasturtiums. If you found this video helpful, mildly inspiring, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Meanwhile, keep your hands in the dirt and your eyes on the stars. Cheers.